Hi, this is Dr. Anthony Revis, and I will share with you some principles on how to have a better chance of succeeding in my Chem 111 class. There are no guarantees. Chemistry is a challenging subject. It is important that if you're in this class that you work on your math skills. We do not review in detail the math skills necessary for this class. So we really suggest that you find a tutor if you're struggling with math skills. So how do you succeed in Chem 111 with Dr. Anthony Revis? There are six principles. One is attendance. We will talk about each of these in details. The second one is use my slides as your reference guide and as your study guide. Number three, do the work. Do the homework, do the homework quizzes. Number four, you will need points, you will need scores. So be sure to score as well as you can on each event. You will need them. The other one is use the resources in Canvas. It is important that you become very skilled in using Canvas. That is a tool that we will use in a course. So make sure that you're aware of the resources available in my modules and other places in Canvas. Attend the recitations so that you can practice the problems. So let's talk in a little bit more detail by asking some frequently asked questions. Number one, attendance. Can I just watch your YouTube lectures? Yes, you can. And I encourage you to do that to support the learning process. However, my live lectures always add tips that you don't get in the videos. All of my live lectures are broadcast in Teams. So if you have concerns about attendance, be sure that you log in to the Teams app. In my live lectures, I frequently share exam types of questions and answers. I also share shortcuts to problem solutions. And I always give tips on how to score well on the upcoming exam. So it is to your advantage to be sure that either live or in teams, you find a way to attend. Number two, the study guide. What's the study guide for your lectures? My slides are your study guide. My slides are exhaustive with most of the important information for you to retain. In fact, I often read my slides because they contain exactly what I want to say and exactly what I want you to know. So be sure when you're working problems or thinking about the concepts, be sure to use my slides as your study guide. If you get a tutor, take my slides with you because oftentimes tutors will show you other ways of getting to solutions that may not be the standards that we want to make sure you understand. Okay, so be aware of that. If you want to know how to get something done or how to work the problem or what the solution should look like, use my slides as the guide. Regardless of what other resources you use to uh, study, make sure you use my slides as a study guide. My slides contain definitions, their meanings for clarity, and I use these for writing questions. Pictures to illustrate the concepts. I use these concepts to write questions for exams. And they contain the problems. And what's important about looking at my slides for the problem is my slides will show you the processes that we expect you to use. Not all processes are standard chemical processes. Yes, you can get to the answers by other means, but one of the things we're trying to teach you in chemistry is the proper process for getting to these solutions. That brings me to working problems. Number three, what if I can already work the problems? That's great, no problem. However, one of the goals of Gen Chem is to teach you the standards for doing the chemistry. Therefore, we expect you to adjust your processes to those we're teaching you, not the other way around. You may have had AP Chem or some other chemistry course somewhere. And oftentimes, Professors will teach you shortcuts or teach you other methods just to show you how to get to the solutions. 
in my Gen Chem 111 and in Gen Chem 111 at Saginaw Valley State University, we expect you to know the processes and standard methods for getting to solutions. So, my best score principles for you are the following. Remember, processes matter with the answers. And in fact, the process will get you more points than the solution. Significant figures are always the final answer. Make sure when we study sig figs, you learn them and you learn them well because it will follow you throughout the rest of the semester. Units are absolute musts. Numbers and values without units, unless those units and values don't carry units, are required. And another thing, organizing your work really does help when you give it to me for review. If I can't read it, I will not grade it. So it's important that you organize the work so that I can follow what, you, what you've done. Okay, so be aware of that. And when in doubt, take a look at the slides and they'll show you the processes we expect. Number four, scores and grades. What about your grading style? What's unique about it? My grading style is challenging but fair. You will know exactly what to expect without surprises, often with a rubric. I always share the expectations. I will tell you what to expect on each exam. I will tell you how I'm going to score you. I will in fact tell you exactly where you're going to lose points. I do my best not to leave any surprises about how you will be graded. But there are some very specific things that you should be aware of that will help you when thinking about your scores and your grades. Partial credit with me is rare, so don't plan your answers based upon receiving a lot of partial credit. It's rare. Makeups are seldom. So don't blow off assignments expecting to get a makeup for an exam or some other assignment. When they're late, more often than not, a zero will be placed right away in your grade. The third thing to think about when it comes to grades and scores with me is extra credit is occasional. But I do consider extra credit up through chapter five. So if there will be extra credit opportunities, usually I will look at the scores and I will put them out there for you to respond to. But that will only happen occasionally through chapter five. Number five, resources, especially the resources in Canvas. What resources are available to help? You can find more resources in each chapter module also, the university offers free tutoring for many students, math, chemistry, physics, and many other subjects. My Chem 111 Canvas resource modules contain full lecture slides. Take advantage of them. They contain full YouTube lecture videos. They contain topic YouTube videos that I've written. They contain practice problem sets. And they obtain exam prep video tips. So I suggest that you look at the resource section in each chapter. Number six, recitations. How do I get more help working problems? Your Chem 111 lecture has a recitation section matched with it. Chem 111 recitations are where we work problems together based on your needs. It is not a second lecture. I do not introduce new material in the recitations. However, I will work exactly what you want to work on. So take advantage of the recitations. When you come to recitation, be prepared to work. To do that, review the slide problems for questions. Practice your homework problems. Try the resource practice problems. Oftentimes, students don't really have questions when they come to recitations, but they tend to listen to the questions and problems that others uh, ask for. So, again, recitation 
is the time where we work problems. My recitations are also broadcast in the Teams app. So while we're doing recitations, they are also broadcast in the Teams app. In fact, all the events that we do in Chem 111 are broadcast in Teams. One other thing that we want to bring to your attention is how to contact me. What's the best way to contact me? My office hours are posted, so send an email for an appointment. We will meet in the Teams app. Now, the next part I'm going to tell you is very important. When emailing me, please only put your course and section followed by your last name as the subject and nothing else in the subject line. Do not put emergency. Do not put important. Do not put I'm angry at you and I'm frustrated in that line. That does not get my attention. I sort for my student's emails by the course number followed by their last name. When that doesn't pop up, your emails fall to the bottom of the list and I get to them uh, at, a dip, at a later date. So your, for your best response, be sure to type in, for example, Kim 11105 c Smith as the only thing in the subject line. Do not put a parenthesis to catch my attention or to tell me anything. Share your concern in the body section. Again, when you email, it should read, for example, Kim 11105 c Smith only. Also, do not expect responses on the weekend. And don't forget, set up your Canvas notifications so you can get announcements and you can get updates. Okay, that's it. How to succeed in Chem 111 with Dr. Anthony Revis.